The following is brought to you by GoldSeekMint.com. Silver and gold bullion directly from the mint. GoldSeekMint.com. Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Vanessa Collette here at the Sprott Symposium, and I'm joined by Jeff Clark, Senior Metals Analyst at Casey Research. Welcome, Jeff. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me. Now, Jeff, a question that's on a lot of investors' minds right now is if the market, the overall markets are going to collapse, is it going to take gold stocks with it if gold goes up at the same time? What are your thoughts there? We actually did some analysis on that. We went back and looked at every major uh, crash or correction in the S&P oh, since the uh, late 70s. There's been something like 16 of them, 10% or greater. And during those episodes, gold actually rose in 11 of them. So it, it did fall in a third of them and it rose in two thirds of them. Okay. Uh, so just because the stock market crashes doesn't mean that gold's automatically gonna decline, right. especially if you measure it over a long period of time, you know, from the, the high in the S&P to where it actually crashes. Mm -hmm. um, in 2008, gold crashed along with the market, but by the end of the year actually ended up. So over time, during the period of a bear market in the S&P does not mean gold is going to crash. It's more likely to go up than it's going to go down. Okay. Now, gold stocks is a slightly different yeah, story. Yeah, that was my next question. It's just the opposite. About two-thirds of the time, the stocks actually do go down, the gold stocks, with the S&P, okay. as opposed to going up, and one-third of the time, they've gone up. So uh, the issue for us, uh, to put gold stocks in perspective, though, they've already crashed dramatically. They're seriously undervalued. Right. One of the greatest undervaluations you'll find in history. So since they've already crashed, it's not likely that they're going to follow the market down that much more. Uh, and in fact, if gold responds positively to that crash, we think gold stocks are more likely uh, in this current environment to go up than they are to go down. So are you looking at gold stocks right now? I mean, you say that they're extremely undervalued. Is this something that Casey Research believes people should be buying right now? Oh, absolutely. I mean, some of the stocks that we've recommended have already doubled, some of the juniors, okay. even some of the producers have had a nice surge. Uh, but in, in historical context, they're still dramatically undervalued. So I personally am still turning over couch cushions. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's, it's just a, the opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, right. You know, Jim Rogers once quipped that well, I, I wait to invest until there's a pile of money just sitting over in the corner. I can walk over and pick it up. <laughs> that is a perfect description for gold stocks right now. Right. Because if you're willing to hold and go through the ups and downs and wait for the next major catalyst to send gold higher, the, the stocks are going to bring just tremendous le leverage to that. And uh, depending on the ones you buy, uh, yes, you could get rich just from buying the right gold stocks and holding on. Right. And how, how do people find the right ones? Well, they come to caseyresearch.com, <laughs> of course, but, but really there, there's a method to our madness and we're looking at who are the highest quality companies right now. So we look at the people, that's the number one factor that you have to look at is the people behind the deposit. Um, we look at the properties themselves, of course, and there are better deposits than there are others and high grade isn't necessarily the right thing. You want a, a profitable high margin mine okay. just as much as high grade. Politics are becoming more and more critical, so it's important that you look at what's a calculated risk, a good risk to take in a political environment versus what is a bad risk. There's no such thing as a no-risk investment politically anymore in the mining environment, so you have to look at where the best risk, your, your, your calculated risk is best put at. So that, those are the kinds of things that we're looking at, but there are definitely better buys out there, there than there are others and some of the companies just simply aren't going to make it if we stayed here for another year or two at these prices. I'm not predicting that, but if we did, some companies just are not going to make it. And you don't want to be holding those in that kind of environment. Absolutely. Now moving over to gold, I think you've looked a little bit in, in some of your studies at how countries buy gold when they're experiencing inflation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh, gold is the number one inflation hedge. It is not real estate, it is not stocks. It is gold in a rising inflationary environment, not a stagnant one, but a rising one, or especially where inflation expectations are high, you're gonna find a, a greater 
uh, protection by buying gold and gold stocks and you are just a general stock market or even real estate in that environment. So uh, yes, we think inflation is an inevitability at some point. We could seek some kind of deflationary crash first, especially if it's related to the stock market. But we think ultimately that's going to be good for gold given the context of the environment that we're in. Um, I, my personal feeling is I think we get more of a stagflation type of thing where uh, inflation is high and yet we have deflation in certain assets, uh, something like we saw in the, in the 70s and 80s, that kind of environment. So uh, the reason a lot of undeveloped countries are buying gold is because they already have inflation in their economies. Okay. That's one reason. And so if we get that inflation here in North America, look out. I, I think gold is going to come back and that could be the next catalyst, who knows. But definitely uh, gold is a good inflation hedge and the number one thing I would use to protect myself for a high inflationary environment. Okay, so it's not just the governments but people should be protecting themselves and you're a big proponent of that. Um, what is the best way for someone to buy bullion? Like, are there accumulation plans or, you know, what are... Absolutely. There's accumulation plans at Silver Saver and at Metal Stream. Metal Stream is part of the Hard Assets Alliance program, okay. which, full disclosure, is a Casey Research product that was started, something I mentioned to our CEO to, to start. So that's a great program or Silver Saver. However you do it, though, this is the time to accumulate. This is the time to be buying while prices are low. Mm -hmm. I mean, silver at $20, $21 is as close to a no-brainer investment as it gets. Uh, and especially if you're buying the, the, the junior silver producers, uh, there's tremendous opportunity there. So however you do it, uh, you want to be buying on a regular basis while prices stay at this level because someday they won't be here and you'll have to pay $25, then you're gonna have to pay $30, then you're gonna have to pay $35, and silver is probably headed to uh, $100. Uh, you know, uh, just inflation adjusting it for the CPI puts it at like $110. And that's using a faulty CPI that's been changed a dozen times since Carter was in office. If you go back and use the CPI formula from 1980, you get a, a silver price of like $470. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's gonna go that high, but clearly the opportunity and the upside is, is all, or the opportunity is to the upside for silver. So this is the time to be accumulating. So however you do it, uh, you want to be doing it now on a regular basis as much as you can yeah. afford on a regular monthly or weekly basis to make sure you own enough to protect yourself for what's coming. Absolutely. And you are also a big proponent of platinum and palladium. What do you think is driving the, the higher prices there? You know, a lot of people were speculating on buying platinum and palladium because of the strike right. in South Africa, because a lot of production comes from, the, the, the bulk of production comes from that country for both metals. Um, but the strike ended, uh, but the prices are still inching up. And the reason is because those problems are not gonna be solved anytime soon. Uh, right. So we think this is the next five year bull market. And the reason is because it's a structural deficit. It's not a one-off, it's not a short-term thing, it's not a temporary thing. It's a structural problem that cannot be solved easily. So platinum, palladium, the, the mine, uh, let us count the reasons. There are so many reasons yeah. why, but the, the per, those mines can't come back online very quickly. They've lost so much already. Demand is still high. The ETFs are still buying and hoarding. Uh, uh, the, the mine shafts are getting deeper. They're getting harder to access. Grades are falling. Power is still a problem. Electricity. You name it. The Rus Russian reserves are what we believe. They don't report them and tell them, but we believe Russian reserves are at just at abysmal levels. Right. They're even the Russian government's even buying from the producers themselves. So that tells you they probably don't have the reserves anymore that they used to have. There's a litany of reasons why you want to buy this, but the bottom line is it's a structural problem that can't be easily resolved. Platinum, palladium are going higher, even though they're already high. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It was a pleasure having you on. Thank you. You're welcome.